Yes, so, th exactly. So, thank you for all your hard work, which has led to this great day. Um, and uh, it was amazing to see how excited the customers were to receive the, the cars. Uh, it, I mean, it was just super good vibes. Um, and um, I think it bodes, it bodes very well for the future of Gigabyte and Brandenburg. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's worth remembering that every car that we make is a step in the in the direction of a sustainable future. Yeah. You know, the the thing about this this factory and, and the, the cars that we make is that it gives people hope about the future. You know? And it's like it's very important to, to have reasons to be excited about the future. Um, because often people are depressed or sad about the future because they think it won't be good. But what we're what we're doing here is with every car we make, with every batch we make, we're making the future better. So. so it, it, you know what what you're doing really matters. It makes a difference, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sort of working on the master plan part three, and and it's uh, uh, huge. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna be good. Um, uh, but a huge part of, of that is scaling to high volume. So in order for us to really affect the world in a positive way, uh, because we get a lot of press, we get a lot of attention, but if you say how many uh, vehicles have we made as a percentage of total vehicles in the world, because there's two billion vehicles in the world, well, so far we've actually, are well below 1%, we're not even half a percent. So it's essential for us to really uh, affect the future in a positive way. We have to make a lot of cars. That's the only way. So, uh, and this was what, we, that's why we call it a gigafactory, you know. It's very big. <laughs> um, and, we're, you know, we're starting off with the Model Y, but we're going to do a number of exciting uh, additional vehicles here. And uh, so I think this overall is just going to be a center of, of excellence for sustainable energy in general, and it's really going to help the world. So, uh, and, and uh, I look forward to doing it with, with you. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, thanks for everything. You know. So, yeah, if you guys have some questions or something, you know. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, a, a great thanks to the Supercharger team for enabling long distance travel. Uh, it's very impressive work that the Supercharger team has done. So I'd like to give them a hand as well. Um, but yeah, the, 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 you know, it's, in addition to the work that we do here, uh, we, also ins we also inspire and encourage the, the rest of the industry uh, to go towards electrification. And I think it's fair to say that without Tesla, without the work that, that the Tesla team has done, uh, that the, the rest of the industry would not be moving so quickly towards electrification. So, uh, and, and that's also why we, we, we open sourced our patents. You know, we made our patents freely available to the other car makers because it was the right thing to do. No other company has done that as far as I know. Um, and it's just, you know, we, we really, at Tesla, we really try to do the right thing, you know, and you know, we want to be a company that you can believe in, in your heart and soul. And in order to do that, we must be the company that does the right thing. So, <laughs> I love you guys too. <laughs> so, I don't know, if, if anybody's got some questions, you can sell it out or something. Okay. When is Tesla going to South America and maybe some other markets? Um, well. Um, we, we definitely want to go to the world. Uh, the uh, challenge we have right now, it's a, good, it's a high class problem, but the, the orders we have are well in excess of our production. So sometimes people will say, why aren't you in, in all these other markets? And uh, why don't you make all these other different versions of the product, like different cars, like where's the Tesla semi-truck and the Cybertruck and the you know, Rosa and other things? Uh, but the, the, the challenge we have, it's a good, a good challenge, is that our orders far exceed our production. So, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, a high class problem. Um, but, but, uh, but we need to have our production get to the point where it exceeds our current orders. Uh, and then, then it makes sense to expand to additional markets and to uh, have additional products.
Um, because if, if we add complexity, but we don't add volume, and we don't add production volume, then we've not actually done anything more. With, with our, because the good is a function of how many vehicles we're able to make. So as we are able to ramp up production and satisfy demand in our existing markets, then we will expand to other markets and we will also add additional products. So, uh, and, and I think, you know, last year there were a lot of supply chain challenges with chips. Everyone knows about the chip shortage. And then uh, this year there's still some chip shortages. And then uh, next year uh, will be, I think, probably a, a, a challenge with, with uh, total battery production. Um, and then so certainly if you start going like two, three years out, it's all, it's all about total, how many gigawatt hours of battery are, are produced. That will be the limiting factor. And then going even further down into the supply chain, what is the rate at which uh, battery materials are being mined and refined? And obviously we want to do that in an ethical and environmentally sensitive way. Um, so that, that in the long grand scheme of things is, is uh, how many terawatt hours of battery can be produced per year. Our, our rough calculation is that it's about 300 terawatt hours is needed to transition the world to a sustainable energy economy. There's a lot of batteries, basically. <laughs> um, so we want to try to do as much of that as possible. And I think we're actually doing a pretty good job. Like we're, you know, growing by, I don't know, 70, 80% a year on average, and um, maybe even faster than that in the future. So, um, yeah, so, so that's, I think, the answer to why not more markets and why not more products. I'm going to get cooked by the sun, by the way. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very sunproof. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I think I'm most proud of the amazing work done by the Tesla team to scale, to, 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 to scale at the rate that we're scaling and, and make compelling products that people love. I mean, you know, you think about it, how many products can you buy that you really love? It's so few, you know? And, and it'd be great if, if people made more products that you love. Um, and, and Tesla is a rare company that makes, actually makes products you love and, and makes people's, you know, you know, that they, brings them joy every day, that's great. Um, so, <laughs> um, and, and if you look at our rate of growth, Tesla is the fastest growing company in history that makes a large manufactured product. So the, the next fastest, I think, was the Ford Model T, like that was 100 years ago. And we're actually growing faster than the Ford Model T, which is crazy. So, yeah. so <laughs> Will it be green? Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, we, we have, with respect to colors, uh, which colors will be available from this factory? Um, colors are always a challenge because when you think about colors, uh, you don't need, need to manufacture it, but you also need to service it and fix it for like 20 years. So it's like, man, that's a, it, like, well, you've got to think about, man, what are we going to put the service team through, <laughs> you know, managing all these colors? So we have to be careful with the total number of colors. But we obviously are going to make some uh, special colors here because, and, and it's more than just the, the, the color itself, but it's the layers of paint in order to get the dimensionality. So, um, you know, so we, we, we're going to make a, a really special red, which I think, I don't know, probably a lot of people have seen. <laughs> yeah, like, kind of like that, yeah. It, it's like a 13 layer, uh, you know, 13 layers of, of paint. You, you, you want to have the... The layers give you dimensionality and, and, and give the different. It gives the, the, the it makes the color look deep and and and, and complex. Um, and then we'll also have a silver uh, that's uh, also I think not as many layers like maybe eight or something, but it's still going to be really special. It's sort of like a kind of a liquid liquid silver um, and, like, and like a yeah like a, a deep deep red. I don't know <laughs> deep complex red. So we're going to make it, uh, starting off with, uh, well, not soon, but in a few months, we'll make uh, the, the special deep, sort of deep dark red and, and uh, sort of uh, quicksilver, you know. Um, it'll be really cool. It'll be like the best color. I think they'll be the, the best paint on any production car that's not like made for like a, a show or something like that. Um, and it's, it's, you have to design the paint shop especially for, you know, because if you're going to do 13 layers, you've got to have 13 steps. So 
It's very difficult to retrofit a paint shop. You have to design it in from the beginning. And that's, that's, that's one of the things that, oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, I don't think we're going to be using graphene, uh, but we do, we will use graphite. Uh, so there's plenty of that, you know. Graphite's just carbon, basically. So in a special form of carbon. But uh, yeah, the I think the battery materials, the the, the uh, for long range it'll be a nickel-based cathode. The cathode is really the important part. Um, they will have lithium, and lithium's only like two percent of the cell. So. Uh, Nickel will be the one for long range, which is currently what we're using. Um, and then for standard range, it would be uh, iron phosphate. Uh, and then for, and I think there's an interesting potential for mang manganese. Um, and the important thing is like, if you look at, you know, at very large scale, you have to say, okay, we need tens of millions of tons. It's like well, maybe hundreds of millions of tons ultimately. And so, the materials that are used for, for batteries at very large scale must be common materials. If they're not common materials, you can't scale. Well, graphene, I, I know everyone loves, loves graphene, but it's, <laughs> I don't know, maybe we'll use it at some point, but the, 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 the it, graphene is a difficult thing to make, um, but even graphene is made of carbon. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> the, but, but the fundamentals of, of scaling batteries are just say like how, how many millions of tons can be produced and produced in an ethical uh, and environmentally good way. Uh, and and uh, I'm confident that we can scale to global volumes uh, using um, iron phosphate and a manganese uh, cathode uh, and then a nickel cathode for uh, long range. So. <laughs> it's, it's FSD Beta Europe. Yes, so FSD Beta Europe, we're, um, I think we, we, we're, we're getting to the point where, where the FSD Beta is very good in the US, um, and we're, uh, later this week expanding to Canada, um, and then uh, I think we'll be ready to show it to regulators uh, in the EU, I don't know, maybe in... Um, two or three months, um, but, but then we've got to do quite a lot of work uh, to for, for all the special case situations in Europe. And, and the, the roads, as you know, if you've driven around Europe, the roads vary quite a lot by country. I mean, maybe the EU, but the road rules are, and the, the way the lines are painted, and it's, it's different. And then you've got to recognize all the, all the different languages. It's quite difficult. Uh, to do full self driving in Europe, it's uh, much more complex than, say, the, the U.S. Uh, or Canada. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of little tricky things. The rules are not the same, you know. Uh, so, um, but I, I think probably we we can start doing beta uh, maybe later this year. I think uh, in Europe, yeah, it's depending depending on regulatory approval. Um, yeah, it's like things are a little different in the U.S. Like in, in the U.S., things are are legal by default, and, and in Europe they're illegal by default. <laughs> so, you know, so we have to get approval beforehand. Uh, whereas in the U.S., uh, you can kind of do it on your own cognizance, more or less. Well, I guess the next target uh, is is really you know to. Um, uh, really scale production this year, um, and um, you know try to make as many cars as we can. Uh, we want to complete uh, development of the Cybertruck uh, and be ready for production next year. Um, hopefully, hopefully have enough battery pack capability to start the the Tesla semi truck, the heavy truck. Um, hopefully, make complete engineering of the Roadster, the new Roadster. Um, and then there's some future projects that are also pretty important. There's also stationary storage, uh, new versions of the Tesla solar roof, there's, you know, Powerwall 3, there's a lot of things. Um, so we have a very exciting product pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. There may be one or two more questions.
<laughs> Love you too. Uh, well, it makes me happy to see you guys happy, I have to say. <laughs> All right, last, last question. Sure. Well, best case scenario. Hmm. <laughs> um, I suppose 10. Um, you know, I, th I think it's, it's uh, aggressive, but not impossible that we could do uh, 20 million cars in 10 years. So. And, and that, that would be a good number because there's two, there's two billion cars and trucks in the world that are in active use. So 20 million would be then 1% of, of global, uh, the global fleet per year. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, guys. All of you.